Hello everyone, quick recap from today's lesson. Uh, today's lesson we looked at the area of a rectangle and how to use the distributive property to find that area. Um, some background knowledge, we need to remember that area is the amount of squares inside a shape and also we need to know or to remember that the area of a rectangle is length times width. Now sometimes you can also see that the area of rectangle will be the same thing, but we call it by a different name. That can be base and height. And when we're counting the squares, we can simply just count, well, how many squares inside this? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 squares. But you know what? I'm lazy. I don't want to have to count one by one every single time. So what I can do is I can build my array. My array says um, I have three here. One, two, three. How many groups of three do I have? I have one, two, three, four. I have four groups of three. And of course, four groups of three is the same as 12, 12 squares inside. Okay, so let's hop over here to this one. Uh, this looks very similar to the ones we learned in class today. Uh, one of the ones in class, or from your exit ticket you should remember, is you have 72 and 30. And you're asked to find out what is the height of that, um, that rectangle. Now just remember, if I look at this rectangle here, I have one big rectangle. And I have two smaller rectangles that make up that big rectangle. What I need to know is I need to know some properties of a rectangle. That is, opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. So this side is equal to that side, and this side is also equal to this side here because they're opposite sides of the rectangle. Now if you notice here, this side, this side right here is actually shared between these two rectangles. Or instead of shared, I can say that's a common side. Common. And let's, let's remember that word there. Um, since that's a common side, I know that the right side here is equal to the left side there. All right, if I want to find the height, and I know the area is this, well, I can write down my, my information, my thinking. I know the area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the width, or maybe in this case, I can say the area of a rectangle is equal to the base times the height. So if this is my height here, my h, that means this here is my base. Well, what do I know about the opposite, opposite side of this rectangle? Well, yes, of course, they're equal. And if you remember, I have a number, my area, which is 72. 72 is equal to something times my height. Well, something times height is going to equal 72. Something times something, okay? Do we remember what we call these words or these numbers? And two numbers that when multiplied together create a product. Or I can say if I divide this number by that number, I'm going to have this number here. Now, two numbers that multiply together, when they're paired together, they create this one. It's what we call a factor. That's right. Thinking back all the way to, what is that, September, uh, factors. So I need to have two factors, two factors that make up 72. Well, one of the best ways to actually find factors is by doing a t-chart. Right? It's a great model. It helps me organize my thinking. So I can go in chronological order as well. Alrighty, so here I have hmm, two numbers that when multiplied together create 72. Well, what's my smallest number? My first one I start at is 1, and 1 times 72 is 72. Can it be divided by 2? Well, it's an even number, so of course it can. 2, 2, and 36. Can it be divided by 3? Hmm, 3. Let's see. Huh, 72. I can split that up into 60 and 12. That means 3 goes into 60 20 times, and 3 goes into 12 4 times, so it's a total of 24 times. Hmm, okay, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. 4. Can it be divided by 4? Well, well let me try this again. Um, 72. 72? Well, I know 4 goes into 80. 20 times. So 20 groups of 4 is 80. If I get rid of one group of 4, that's 76. If I get rid of another group of 4, that's 72. So 20 minus one group, two groups of 4. So 20 minus 2, that's 18. 18 groups of 4 makes up 72. Mm, okay, let's keep on going. 5, does 5 work? 5, um, no, because this doesn't end with a 0 or a 5, 5 cannot work. Next one, 6. 
six. How many times does six go into 72? Well, I know six goes into 60 10 times, and six goes into 12 two times. So that's going to be a total of 10, uh, 10 plus 2, which is 12. Sweet. Let's keep on going. 7. Can 7 go into 72? Um, well, 7 times 10 is 70. And if I go one more group of 7 at 77, one group less of 70, that's 63. So, no, that doesn't work. And I have 8. 8, well, I know 8 goes to 80 10 times. It goes to 80 10 times. If I get rid of one group of 8, that's down to 72. So 10 times minus one group, 10 minus 1 is 9, 8 and 9. And that's all my factors right there. So two numbers that multiply together can create 72. I have all those ones. Hmm. Which one do I choose? Well, do you remember this one over here? Left side of that rectangle has to equal right side. So that means this height is the same. This, this height for this rectangle is the same as this height for this rectangle. So not only do I need a factor of 72, that same factor has to be for 30. Hmm, wait a minute. If two numbers have the same factor, what do we call that one again? You guessed it. It's a common factor. A common factor. And often, to make things most efficient, I want to find the biggest common factor. The biggest number I can take out of those two numbers. And you guessed it. We call it the greatest common factor or just GCF for short. Well, I have all my factors for 72. Let's get my factors for, for 30. Let's see, 30, here we go. So I have one and 30, I have two and 15. I'm just gonna speed this up for us. I have three and 10, I have four and, uh, nope, four doesn't work. I have five and six, and that's all of them. So my common factors, what are all my common factors? One, well, of course, when we don't count that, I have two is a common factor, 3 is a common factor, nope, 4, 5, nope, 6 is a common factor, 8, nope, 9, nope, 10, oh, so my common factors are 2, 3, and 6. My greatest common factor, of course, is 6. So let's pick, take this one, this common side, which is a common factor, let's choose 6. So if my height is 6, what will the length of this rectangle be? Well, I know my factors for 72 is 6 and 12. So if this is 6, this has to be 12. All right, and then how about over here? If this has to be 6, what does this have to be to equal 30? My 30, 6 and what? 6 and 5. And there we have it. I found all my factors for there. Join me in the next video where I work backwards.